You men head south. We'll take the stagecoach trail. Howdy, stranger. Sorry, but I'm gonna have to borrow your horse for a spell. I reckon I'd better borrow your gun, too. Why does it hurt most? Oh, my ankle. Here and here. Busted rib. Somebody put the boot to you, huh? Horse fell on me. I'll take it easy a minute. Sit down. Let's roll up your shirt. Raise your hands over your head. Feel better? Much, thanks. Let's get out of here. Say what you're thinking. I'm not thinking anything. Take a chew of this. It'll help you keep your mind off the pain. Thanks. Come on. <laughs> Me as Sandy Claus. What's that? Nothing, nothing at all. 
This is the stage depot. They'll take care of you. I'll still need your horse. You're welcome to it and anything else I have. Uh, forget it. What's going on here? Like one of them, does he? I never seen this fella before. What do you want? What's your name, stranger? Edward Creighton. What you doing here? Surveyor. Surveyor? Yes, I work for Western Union. What's Western Union? Well, telegraph company. We're going through here next year on our way to the coast. I guess he's all right. Anything wrong? We had a bank hold up at North Platte today. We killed one of them, the rest of them scattered. Looks like we've lost them now for good. things, Bert. I reckon you'll be back this way with that telegraph line for long. If everything goes right, I will. I do a little trapping now and then, so I was wondering how much it would cost to send my pelts into Omaha by telegraph. You can't send pelts by telegraph, Bert. You can't? No. All you can send is writing. Then the telegraph ain't gonna do me any good. Ah, uh, Bert, you know, I, I can't repay you for your kindness, but, well, this may help a little. Thanks. Holding money. Can you manage all those things yourself? Oh, yes, sir. Better let me take that, too. Woody. Woody, I want you to have this along with my thanks. Gosh, Mr. Creighton, thanks. Goodbye, boys. I'll see you next year. Hello, boys. Nice fella. Yes, sir. -y. But you don't believe what he said about that there telegraph coming through here, do ye? Of course not. There ain't no such thing as a telegraph, no how. But he's a right nice fella, just the same. He sure is. Look what he gave me, his watch and chain. Yes. Now, what does a fella that goes to bed at sundown and gets up at sunup want with a watch? Well, it's a mighty pretty thing to wear. Sounds nice, too. Yeah. to pay for drivers, diggers, pole men, and timber cutters is $2 a day. And when we hit the Indian country, it's $3. 
and every man supplies his own gun. Okay? What do you mean, okay? It's a telegraph call. It means all right. Now, if the doc here passes you, why, you buckos have got yourself a job. You know? Stand up, son. Mm, nice with it. I ain't no horse. You wish there were for you through. Yeah, feels like you got a slug of lead there, partner. 44? Engineer ahead. It don't bother me none. You know, some members of the medical profession like to cut them things off, but I say let them stay if they're set comfortable. You know this country we're going into? One hundred miles from here. I lost this hair back in 56. Hmm. Neat bit of surgery, right? Like. Mm. Oh. What's well, failing you? Did he say a hundred miles from here? Oh, that was five years ago. Nowadays, we don't see no engines this side of Cottonwood Springs. Then you and me start drawing down an extra dollar, eh? <laughs> Speak for yourself, stranger. When I get back to St. Joe, I figure on keeping my hair instead of telling the folks how I lost it. Indians don't always scalp a fella. Not if the fella scalps him first. <laughs> this ain't for me. I've got to have peace and quiet when I'm preparing my vittle. But are you a cook? For 20 years, with the same head of hair, and I intend to be for 20 more. Gents, I bid you a good day. Hold him, Doc. Oh, no, Dr. Murdoch. Yeah? Mr. Creighton says he don't need these no more. Put them down. Go down to the cookhouse and tell that good-for-nothing poisoner he's fired. Can you cook lamb? There are nine different ways to cook mutton, and I know them all. Boiled, stew, frigacy. Never mind that. Do you cook it with the hair on it? I should say not. Hooray! Then you're hired. No, no. And your job is see if he stays hired. Uh, remind no, no. me some time to show you an old Indian way to cook prairie dog. Oh, no. I should have stayed in St. Joe. <laughs> hello, Mr. Craven. Oh, hello, Bert. Oh, where's Miss Creighton, Bert? Oh, she's over at the corral, sir. We're buying some new horses today. Oh. How many have you? What's that with my sister? Yeah. That's the fellow I hired to do our scoffing and take charge of the livestock, sir. Hello, Sue. Edward, darling! Well, tell me you've given up telegraphy for a corral. Oh. Oh. oh, Edward, I'm so glad you're back. What'd the doctor in Washington say? Well, he says I'm fit as a fiddle. I could walk from here to Salt Lake on my hands if I had to. I'm so glad. Sure, this is Mr. Creighton, the big boss. The only man around here you have to be polite to. I'm glad to know you, Shaw. You've got to take a lot of horses and cattle a long way. Do you think you can manage it? I think so. Good. Come on, sis. You're supposed to be a telegrapher, you know. Goodbye, Mr. Shaw. Goodbye, ma'am. Uh, what's the rush, Shaw? We're not leaving here for a couple of days. I'm leaving tonight. Why? You know why. I like being alone. The best place to be alone sometimes is in a crowd. That's the way I figured it, till I ran into you. There's a good chance for you in Western Union. Is there? I think so. It's up to you. You don't owe me nothing. How could I? I never saw you before. Glad to meet you, Mr. Creighton. Here. Take 
take good chew of this. Help keep your mind off things. Thanks. See Mr. Creighton, please. Next office. Thank you. You, uh, you spell Jude, D U D E. Oh, that's the way. No, I... E's a single dot like that. You put a dash after it like that. Why, well, I did nothing of the sort. Besides, I don't even know what you're talking about. No, but I know what you're talking about. Next time, let's talk about, uh... Mr. Creighton? Yes, I'm Creighton. I'm Richard Blake, reporting for work, sir. Well, how do you do, Mr. Blake? Well, I was expecting you by stage. Well, the stage was so crowded and bumpy that uh, I bought a spring wagon, drove the last leg myself. Well, yeah, it's much more comfortable that way. Quite. Oh, Mr. Blake, I want you to know uh, Homer Kettle, my assistant. This is Pat Grogan, our foreman. How do you do, gentlemen? How are you, Sonny? Glad to know you, Blake. Well, the last leg of your trip must have been rather lonesome. Well, I didn't mind that as much as I did the dust. <laughs> I could do with a bath. Uh, a bath? Yes, don't you approve of them? Well, if the weather's hot and you're near a river, I ain't got a thing against them. Uh, what, uh, what type of work would you prefer to be assigned to, Mr. Blake? Why, uh, anything at all. I uh, had some engineering at Harvard, and I know the Morse code inside out. Well, now, I think we can figure out something. For the present, why don't you run on over to the hotel and take your bath, and we'll have a little talk later. Well, thank you very much. Good day, gentlemen. And uh, you too. Well, the... Oh, Mr. Blake. Yes? I'm sorry. Sorry? Because I understand the Morse code? Yes. No, I mean, I... <laughs> You'll have to excuse me. I have work to do. Well, anyway, I'm happy to have met you, Miss Creighton. You are the big boss's sister, aren't you? Yes, but how'd you know? How did I know? You both have that intense look. Does the great Western outdoors do that to you? No, it's people we meet from the East. Well, some people you meet are going to insist on meeting you again. So I won't say goodbye now. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, oh, oh. See? Thank you very much. Oh, by the way, could you direct me to the hotel? It's on Main Street. Take your first turning to the right and go down two streets. Thank you very much. Just a minute, old man. Do you know who I am? I haven't the faintest idea. I'm the provisional governor of the territory of Nebraska. You are? Well, when you come up for re-election, I'll vote for you. You don't vote for a provisional governor. He's appointed by the president. Oh, well, then the next time I'm in Washington, I'll put in a good word for you. Just wait, watch out! Would you mind telling me what that was that just passed through here? Well, that is a son of tough old Arad Blake, who made his fortune hauling freight through the Cumberland Gap in the 30s. Arad Blake? That? Yes, his father thinks a job with Western Union will make a man out of him. <laughs> when I was back east, Ed gave me $50,000 for the line. Oh, I see. You got the son with the money. <laughs> <laughs> Heavens, do you see what I see? Mm -hmm. 
Well, here I am. All ready for work. So I see. Where'd you get that outfit, in town? Oh, no, New York, Ted. Yeah. I wanted to be sure of the fit. Not bad, huh? Blake, this is Shaw, our scout. How do you do? Howdy. Well, a nice looking bunch of horses you have here. Glad you like them. Do you ride? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. They I mean, ain't liver stable animals. Some of them are pretty wild. Well, that's the way I like them. Would you mind picking one out for me? <laughs> I'd be delighted. Take that black one over there. This way, please. Somebody better call Doc Murdoch. else you'd like me to try. No. A little present for you, Homer. He's quite a talker, ain't he? Mm, quite a rider, too. I'd better be running along. Oh, so soon? Yeah, well, I just thought I'd wish you a happy Fourth of July. But that's tomorrow. Well, I thought I'd be the first. But I see I wasn't. Was that what you came for, too, Mr. Shaw? Mm-hmm. Well, I reckon I'd better be going along, too. Good night. Both of you. Thanks for dropping by. Good night. Uh-huh. Adios. Good night. I, uh, I didn't have a chance to tell you before, but you did all right today on that bucket horse. Yeah, it wasn't so bad. They gave you the worst crit in the lot. You always do that with every tenderfoot, don't you? Depends on the tenderfoot. Well, I'm sorry I disappointed all of you, but I was riding horses before I could walk. Good night. You, uh, 
Going my way? <laughs> A transcontinental telegraph line has long been the dream of Americans. Now it is to become a reality, a great reality that will eventually triumph over hardship and privation. It now gives me great pleasure to present the chief engineer of Western Union, Mr. Edward Creighton. <laughs> I've just received a message here which I think better than any words of mine will explain the urgency of our task. Allow me to wish you Godspeed on a journey that will do much to help this union in its hour of greatest need. It is imperative that our government have quick communication with the West. The message is signed, Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> when his dream begins to materialize. I know. Things like this, it makes some women wish they'd been born men. Well, don't forget, you've got a job to do, too. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Edward. God bless you. Something tells me I'm going to miss dear old Omaha. Me, too. I hate to say it, Miss Creighton, but I'm afraid this is goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Blake. You'll take care of my brother, won't you? I'll do my best, ma'am. Uh, don't you want him to take care of me, too? <laughs> I'll do that, too. <laughs> Adios, Miss Creighton. Goodbye. Bye. We're doing 
going fine, 11 miles in two days, but we've got to do better. See, this is prairie country, and we've got to make every minute count, because pretty soon we're going to hit the hills, and we're liable to run into trouble. All right, that's all. Let's turn in now, get a good night's sleep. Tomorrow we'll get at it again bright and early. Eat in this Creighton? Uh, well, I didn't expect to see you. Is there anything wrong? No, nothing wrong. We're just a few miles out, so uh, so I sort of thought that. Good. Uh, sit down. Thanks. You see, I uh, I had some unfinished business here, and I. Uh... Good evening, Mr. Shaw. I had some unfinished business too. on your ride back. Yes, we could. We're sure you did. Where's Frank? They killed him. Here's where you and me start getting that extra dollar. Four went right through you, Herb. Had not to be no trouble at all. Let's get into my tent, boys. We'll have more light to work by. Come on, grab hold, Cookie. He won't kick in. Too bad. Herb was a real nice fella. He isn't a dead yet. No, but I got a week's wage that says he will be before morning. I'll take that bet. Right. They get all the cattle? That's what they say, sir. Mm. I can't figure this out. This is pony country, and ponies don't go after cattle when there's plenty of buffalo around. Did you think it was rustlers? Don't know. I'll go have a look. How many men do you want? None. You don't expect to bring back the cattle alone, do you? I don't expect to get an Indian war started, either. First thing we got to find out is what sort of game we're sitting in on. All right. Double the guard tonight, Pat. Yes, sir. Come on, Homer. I want you to call Fort Kearney. Shaw. Wait a minute. You going after them? Yes. If you don't mind, I'd like to go with you. Sorry, but this is one job we don't trust to a tenderfoot, no matter how good he is. How is he, Doc?
Better luck next time, Doc. Reach and turn around slow. There's Jack. Howdy. Hello, Vance. Howdy. We knew you'd come back sooner or later. Well, we kind of missed you since that little affair at North Platte. Where you been, Missouri? No, Omaha. Omaha? Wasn't that a little risky? Not very much. My face isn't as well known as yours. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing out here? Working for Western Union. I came to get those cattle you rustled. What do you mean, rustled? We're soldiers now, fighting for the Confederacy. Them clothes you got on don't look like no uniforms to me. Of course not. We're guerrillas, under orders from General Mosby. Did he order you to dress up like Indians and steal cattle? As far as you're concerned, yes. These here are my raiders, just like Mosby's got. I do whatever I think will help the cause along. You might help the cause a lot more by going down south and joining the army. You talk like you forgot where you was born. You come from Missouri, same as me. Are you going against your own people? When they turn against their own country, then they ain't my people anymore. Well, they're mine. And they don't want this Yankee wire strung. And as long as I'm alive, it ain't gonna be. You wouldn't be making a little money out of your fighting, would you? Well, sure. There's money in it. We sort of combine business with pleasure, so to speak. I want those cattle, Jack. You know what you're gonna have to do to get them, don't you? You win, for now. Wait a minute. How do I know you won't tell Creighton about us? You don't? Supposing I don't let you go. Why don't you stop me? Ah, oh, go ahead. Adios, Jack. What do you think you'll do? What can he do, the way things are? Oh, Mr. Creighton. Mm, yes? Those heathen savages sure cleaned us out. What am I going to tell the men when they start yelling for dinner? Well, Herman, tell them we'll get some more beef just as soon as possible. That's a mighty indefinite answer to give to a hungry man. Well, they'll have tightened up their belts for a day or two. Did you ever try telling that to a feller after he sat down to the table and tied his napkin around his neck? I did, just once. Unsaddle and feed him, Joe. You want him rub down? I'm going to do that myself. If 
find any traces of them? They're up the river 20 miles. Indians? Yes. Well, we'll get some men together and we'll I get out. And... There are a bunch of Dakotas, a couple hundred in the party. I talked to them. Well, don't they know they're inviting trouble by stealing our cattle? They know there's no cavalry around here. I tried to reason with them, but they wouldn't listen. My advice is to charge the beef off to Indian goodwill and let it go at that. As much as I was boss of the herd, I reckon it's my fault it was stolen. Best thing I can do is quit and clear out. That's nonsense, Shaw. You can't be held responsible for something like this. Besides, I need you. You are the boss. Sue! Hello, Ed. What? Hello, Mr. Shaw. Howdy, Miss Creighton. Hello. Hello. What in heaven's name are you doing out here? Oh, I'm the new operator you sent for. Yeah. Are you responsible for this? Well, I, I telegraphed Omaha, but I didn't know who they were going to send. I'll bet you didn't. Mm, seems very much as if nobody wanted me. Driver, when does that eastbound stage pass here? In an hour or two. You're going right back to Omaha, young lady. And you're going to stay there till I really send for you. Oh, I can't help it if you send me back. Ah, uh, but it was worth the trip just to see you. No, no, none of that. I'd like to show you our thriving metropolis. You really need a guide to get about, you know. Very nice of you, Blake. But I want you to go ahead with the wagons. But, Shaw, sure, you'll be responsible for Miss Creighton while she's here and seeing that she gets safely on the eastbound stage. It'll be a pleasure, sir. Well, I, uh, must be off, it seems. Goodbye, Miss Creighton. Goodbye, Mr. Blake. I'm sorry you couldn't stay. So am I, but then that's the telegraph business for you. Sue, is he responsible for this? Oh, no, not altogether. I just wanted to see you. Honest, I did. We're going to be in Salt Lake before you know it. Oh, I hope so. Well, I've got to go now. The men are waiting at the head of the line. Oh, so soon. I have a thousand things to ask you. Well, I've got a thousand things to do. Goodbye, dear. Mm, goodbye, Edward. And remember, the next time I pay you a visit, that I'm your only sister and that I love you. Yeah. I think he's a great man. Mm-hmm. The whole family saw the great. It's coming. <laughs> what is it? Oh, the message from my brother at the end of the line. He says, haven't you gone yet? <laughs> What did you say? No! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's beautiful. My brother says it even looks like me. But of course, he's prejudiced. No, ma'am, not this time. again. Like me, after the stage leaves. Oh, I hope I haven't said anything I hadn't ordered. You haven't. Of course, I know I haven't a chance against somebody like Blake, well, but... Haven't you better let me decide that? I should have met you a couple of years ago. Why? Since then, I've made some mistakes. Mistakes can be corrected. Not always.
Does this here stage connect with the railroad that goes to St. Joe? She sure do, partner. Mister, you got a passenger. How's about you and me taking a little walk to work up an appetite? <laughs> but I don't feel like walking, and I don't feel like eating. Just the same, that's what you're gonna do. seeing you again. Don't say that. We'll meet in Salt Lake. Maybe. Anyhow, I'll be thinking of you. This might help you. Looks like we got company. Mount your horse and warn the others. Hurry, right, Jimmy, Eddie! We're moving back to the main camp, Indians! I gotta warn the men at the main camp. I was just about to make this connection. Maybe it'd be quicker if you warned them by telegraph. That is, unless you're sort of anxious to get out of here. Pull over. You hand the key and I'll make the connection for you. Honey, I ain't gonna let them Indians get you. <laughs>
it away. You won't need it. I'm not so sure. I am. And until Mr. Creighton gets here, I'm boss. You give whiskey. No gun. Mm, me look. Let him alone. keep. your paw. I suppose that's the thanks I get for trying to help you. Whenever I need your help, I'll ask for it. If you ever get my help again, you'll have to get down on your knees and beg for it. Indians are raiding the main camp. I think you're going to lose this patient. Not if I'm as good a doctor as you are with that hatchet. I wouldn't mind so much if he was only an engine, but he ain't. What? No engine ever looked like that. Hmm. I've got to keep this fellow alive, Mr. Creighton. I want to ask him a few questions. Oh, Doc. 
I gotta have medical attention. And I gotta have a quick. Are you shot, Herman? No, I ain't. What's the matter with you? This is private. It's gotta be kept private. Well, uh, why didn't he didn't make it, Mr. Creighton? Did he say anything before he died? He called me a few bad names while I was throwing him up. I'll have him buried immediately. I don't want the men to know for the time being. He's being slapped with a spade right now. What do you think of this, Shaw? I don't know. You got any ideas? No. You said those Indians that you met today were drunk, didn't you? Yeah. A white man disguised as an Indian participated in the raid on the camp. That means white men must have got the real Indians drunk and talked them into attacking us. They ain't all Yankees out here, you know. Apparently not. You sure those Indians that got away with our beef at sinking wells were Indians? They look like Indians to me. All right, that's all, boys. Now go on about your jobs as if nothing had happened. Shaw, you're taking over Grogan's job as foreman. I don't have to tell you what a responsibility it is. Thanks, Mr. Creighton, but I can't take that job. I, uh, I haven't had the experience. You had more experience than any man in the outfit. I want to, only... You're not going to let me down at a time like this, are you, Shaw? Somebody has got to take charge of things and pick out some new horses and... Oh, I can do that. They ought to be 60 or 70 head in Sage. And you take the job? If that's the way you want it, Mr. Creighton. That's the way I want it. We'll go into town tomorrow. We'll buy up whatever we can. All right. Good night. Good night. May I talk to you for a minute, sir? Of course. I don't like to butt in, sir, but I think we're making a grave mistake. Yes? I know you have great faith in Shaw. You've just made him foreman, and no doubt he deserves the post. Come to the point, Blake. Well, it seems to me if we ever want to get this wire strung, we'll have to act differently than we have up till now. What do you mean? You know I'm not looking for a fight or trouble, but look what happened to our cattle. Look what happened today. I suppose Shaw knows his business, but the way he let those Indians manhandle us, you'd think he was deliberately going out of his way to encourage them to strike at us again. However, I guess there's a lot about the West I never will understand. Good night. Good night. to go any farther. Come on. Howdy, Vance. Howdy, Jack. You're at Creighton, the Western Union, ain't you? That's right. My name's Jack Slade. Nice bunch of horses, ain't they? Very nice. You wouldn't be in the market, would you? Yes, I might. How much do you want for them? Five thousand dollars and help yourself. Our camp was raided yesterday by Indians. They got most of our stock. Then these ought to be just the thing for you. They ought to. They're ours. Huh? I said they're ours. They were stolen from us. Now, look here, Creighton. You wouldn't accuse me of being a horse thief, would you? No, I'll wait till I've heard your explanation. Why, well, I got these horses from a bunch of Indians. They didn't say where they got them. You didn't ask. No, I didn't. And in this country, when you call a man a horse thief, you better have some proof. I bought these horses in good faith, and I aim to sell them the same way. Well, then I guess I better see the law about this. Well, you have to go back to Omaha if you do. It don't run beyond there. I'll make some of my own. That wouldn't look so good, would it? Western Union stringing up white men for what a bunch of Indians did? You've got all the answers, haven't you? Oh, well, sure, there might be able to give you a few more. He knows his country inside out. What he says makes sense, Mr. Creighton. At least it does out here. 
All right, I'm going to give you that $5,000 because I've got a lot of work to do and no time for fighting. I'm paying you on the assumption $5,000 will buy you off, but if you ever bother Western Union again, the next payment will be in lead. Is that clear? Well, listen, Take Clayton. out a bill of sale. I'll meet you at the saloon in 15 minutes. You two seem to know one another pretty well. Yeah, we do. Old friends? More or less. We were both raised in the same corner of Missouri. this by telegraph if you want. No, no. I trust you. I suppose you deal in cattle, too. Well, I ain't lately, but uh, you're in the market. Just a question. Well, Mr. Creighton, you're a right good man to do business with. But only once. Did all right by that outfit. Yeah, and I ain't said goodbye to Mr. Ed Creighton yet. No? No. But first of all, I want to take a great big drink to the Confederate States of America. <laughs> if there was no Confederates, there wouldn't be no war. Ain't that something to drink to? <laughs> yeah, but I think... You know, a good thing can be made to last a long time if you don't spoil it. Besides, I'm a patriot. I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you. Chief Spotted Horse of the Ogallala Sioux has sent in word that you can't build any more line through his nation. No, why not? One of your men wounded his son yesterday. They were drunk, Captain. They raided our camp immediately afterward, and they killed several of my men. Spotted Horse says none of his Indians killed any white men. Some renegades got a few of his young bucks drunk and talked them into a horse-stealing raid to get some more whiskey. The renegades did the killing. So the chief feels that only white men are to blame. Who are the renegades? Spotted Horse says he doesn't know. Indians are not. I'm going ahead with the line, Captain. The government is counting on it. I realize that, Mr. Creighton. Washington has already notified me to help you all I can. But unfortunately, most of my troops have been ordered to the Army of the Potomac. Besides, an Indian war means a massacre. You wouldn't want that. Of course not. We have Spotted Horse's brother at Fort Kearney as a hostage for the good behavior of the Agalala. I might try putting a little pressure on him. Maybe in two or three weeks. Well, I can't wait. The winter is almost here, and from now on, every day counts. You know, if I could talk with the chief, perhaps I could get him to change his mind. Well, I'm afraid that's too great a risk. After what's happened, you'd have to go into his territory alone, or with no more than a couple of men, and unarmed. Even then, there's no telling what he might do. Well, we've got to take that chance, and with your permission, we will. Thank you. Devils, aren't they? Just don't get your wires crossed. 
Whatever we do, we gotta do quick. Indians can't stay interested in one thing very long. He says you come in peace today, but there won't be any peace if you try to take the singing wire through the Ogallala Nation. Well, tell him that the great white father who speaks with lightning over the singing wire is sorry for the wounding of his Indian son, but that the lightning talk is strong medicine and it must go through. I know I said one thing. He says the Ogallala doesn't believe the singing wise strong medicine. Ask him if he'll let ten of his strongest braves hold the tongue of the singing wire. That is after we've proved it's harmless. Was Henyan Dadi? And the no? Gan Wendy. He says yes. He wants to know why we pour water on the ground. Oh. Oh. Well, tell him, uh, tell him we must make sacrifice to the rain god, who's brother to the lightning. Spotted horse sees the connection between the gods. Hold the wire, Shaw, and explain to him that it's good medicine for us, but it's bad for our enemies. He says the Great White Father's lightning is the strongest medicine they've ever seen, that the singing wire can go through his nation in peace. Well, tell him I promise that the singing wire will make good medicine for the Ogallala against their enemies. He says, peace, peace. Now, let's get out of here before they have a chance to think it over. Everything was going to be all right from the first, weren't you? Of course. Now I gave it a thought. Funny! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Boys, uh, I've called you together tonight to give you some good news for a change. <laughs> We've practically licked our job. We're on the last leg, and the finish is almost in sight. You fellas have all done a great job. And so, when we reach Salt Lake City, everybody gets an extra two months' pay as a bonus. <laughs> and tonight, double portions of grub for everybody. <laughs> See you, Vance. What for? It's a matter of life and death. He had an argument with a fellow over in Elkville, and a fellow plugged him in the stomach. Where is he? Only a couple of miles from here. All right. I'll meet you on the other side of the camp. Sorry, Vance. This is orders. Come on. Get the horses, boys. Hi, Vance. I don't look so blame sore. I got you up here to save you from a roasting. I'm gonna burn out Western Union tonight. Didn't want you to be a part of it. That's mighty white of you. Well, you used to be one of us. As far as I'm concerned, you still are. You kept your mouth shut and you played square. Didn't want to see you get hurt. Get hold of yourself, Jack. You can't fight a thing as big and as important as Western Union. Why, it's plumb low, Coda. No, it ain't to me. If this thing don't work tonight, something else will. I'm gonna stop him if I have to cut down every Yankee pole between here and Omaha. Are you gonna be with us or not? Listen, Jack, I want to give you some of the best advice you've ever had. Yeah? Let Western Union alone. I'm not going to let them alone till they paid ten times over for every foot of wire they're stringing. Why, this is better known than a gold mine. Steal the cattle, steal the horses, burn them out. Then when they need more wagons, more horses, and more cattle, we'll be on hand to sell them to them. You're a fool, Jack. You can't go up against a thing as big as this without getting hung. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. If you've got any sense, you'll string along with us. I'll tell you what I'll do. You come along with us, and I'll cut you in for half of my share. It's a bargain on one condition. Yeah? That you agree to give up this bonfire business and come back to Missouri with me. We'll join up with General Mosby and be real guerrillas. <laughs> Tie him up, boys, and tight. You won't change your mind and come with us. Not this trip. All right. Come on, boy.
I looked everywhere, Mr. Creighton, but I can't find him. All right, I'll see him in the morning. Good night. Good night, Joe. You looking for Shaw? Yes. I saw him right out of camp over an hour ago. This timber's so dry, it'll burn up like paper. Be sure you circle the whole camp. Let's go! 
Charlie. I'm so tired. What's the matter, Herman? A little accident? No. Oh, when the fire started licking out his boots, he went so fast he ran clean out of his britches. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now, Cookie. Behave yourself. Here. Eat your stew like a good boy. Here. Look at this nice little piece. Come on. Isn't that good? I didn't think you got back in time to get burned. You're next, son. Oh, sure. Come to my tent. I want to talk to you. Thanks, Doc. Ever see this before? No. Shaw, for a long time, I've been expecting you to tell me something. And you didn't. I've given you every chance. The only conclusion I can draw now is I was wrong about you. You know, I didn't say anything when the cattle were stolen. And I didn't say anything about that horse deal and Sage. But your absence last night is something I won't put up with. Now, once and for all, I want the truth. All right, pack up your things and get out. That all? Yes. Well, I see you're clearing out. Yeah, for good. After I go, there's a favor I want you to do for me. A favor? For you? Tell Mr. Creighton Jack Slade's my brother. Your brother? I wanted to tell him myself, but when a fellow's your own brother, there ain't much you can say. I'm going into Oakville on a little business. Tell Mr. Creighton not to worry. Jack Slade won't follow the Western Union anymore. Jack, he's here now looking for you. Hello? Yeah. We'll stay here. All right. If you'll excuse me, I think I'll go and have dinner. Put that cloth around me and get to work. Uh, but my wife, she's a stickler for punctuality, and, and I live way over on the other side of town. Shut up and do as I tell you. Yes, sir. Be careful you don't nick me if you know what's good for you. Oh, no, sir. There he is. Didn't see us. He's seen us all right. I know, Vance. What are we going to do? That depends. We'll see.
comes. Howdy, Vance. Howdy, Jack. Did you come to join us? No. I'm gonna give you an even break, Jack. It can't go on this way any longer. It's gotta be either you or me, so... Get up and take that apron off. Makes a nice sound, doesn't it? Coming across the continent. It's music. We sure could hear it. It's 
a long way from Salt Lake City to Boot Hill and Elkville. But I think he can hear it. <laughs> 